Welcome to North Las Vegas, and thank you for checking out Cars, Shops, and Collections. And today, as you probably saw in the heading of the video, we're gonna go see Dean in his 1969 Dodge Charger that he bought bone stock. But now, it is bad to the bone. This thing is so cool. Um, thank you for watching the show, by the way, and for everyone that has subscribed to the show, made a comment. We have viewers in Australia. We did a t-shirt giveaway, and the winner's in Wyoming, so viewers everywhere, I appreciate everyone watching the show. 20,000. I know. Subscribers. 20,000 subscribers. And also too, turn the camera. Big thank you to Gene. This is the guy who makes it all happen. Oh, wait. <laughs> so we'll get in my car. Gene, you get in your, your taco, your Tacoma. And let's go see Dean in his 1969 Dodge Charger. Dean? Hey man, how's it going? Oh, dude, holy cow. Take a look at this. Oh man. I first saw this at a car show about a month ago it, it, and it was wicked, but something about seeing it in the garage, the owner's garage. Oh my gosh. This is gonna be good. Hello, my name is Dean and I'm gonna show you my 1969 Dodge Charger. Dean, man, thanks again for, for having me and show, showing us your car. So let, let's talk about the Dodge Charger. It comes out in 1966. Gen 1 is 1966 and 1967. They were competing against the Ford Mustang. Um, sales are not the best. About 30 to 40,000 Dodge Chargers are sold. When it comes to the Ford Mustang, they sold like over a million during that two-year time frame. Yeah, didn't they shut down the... Thunderbird plant to switch over to Mustangs? So they're printing out, they're making, like printing money. They're printing Mustangs left and right. So I love it because Dodge makes a change come Gen 2 and you got 68, 69, and 70. And I think out of those three years, 69 seems to be the most popular. Is that what you were looking for when you found this? Yeah. yeah. I was just driving down the street and I looked over and I saw one sitting on the rack of a used, little crappy used car lot. Uh -huh. <laughs> Swooped in and bought it right up. And the rest is history. Yep. 1995, you, you, you bought this. Let's do this because I don't think we're given the car, oh my gosh, it is gorgeous. I don't think we're giving it justice in the garage. So can we shut the hood? Let's back it out. Let's get it in the sun and really break this thing down. Okay. Cold. Oh, <laughs> look at that sun hit that. What do you have to bring it this way, Dean? What a great stance on that, too. That's perfect, right here, perfect. Yeah, she's a little cold-blooded. Yeah, that's right, that's right. Needs to be warmed up a bit. Okay, let's talk about this. 1969 Charger. This is where we get the split up front, I think most recognizable. Dukes of Hazard. General Lee was a 1969 Dodge Charger. By the way, they wrecked 300 1969 Dodge Chargers. Well, I heard it was five to 800. Was it really? And I heard there's also a warehouse in Henderson somewhere where one of the guys that originally worked on the cars has a warehouse full of them. They're all jump cars, so they're all totals. There was a guy here in town that worked in all of them that built one with all, all of the uh, parts from the TV show. And Whiskey, our friend Whiskey, we've done episodes with, owns that car. Oh, yeah? Yeah, Whiskey's Auto Distillery. So if you look them on Instagram, you'll see pictures of it. And it, was so, weird, it was weird how they did it, too, because they put ads in all the surrounding counties. And it was like any 68 to 70 Charger, and they put a set price. Uh -huh. So you could tow in a hunk of and they buy it. Really? Because they just needed it for parts. Yeah, or, exactly, you know, for the show and stuff. Yeah, Because yeah, they, just, they just make them, if you watch the show closely, you can see that they're all not, they're all not, they're all not all 69s. Okay. 
And you see, too, this way, and those cars are just beat on that show. Well, let's talk about yours. Let's go back to 1995. What You said it was bone stock when you bought this. And this was base model charger when you bought it? Yeah, it was a 383 two-barrel. Uh -huh. So I guess not a base model. Base model would have been 318. But it's, uh, it was uh, dark bronze metallic. Had the original interior in it. It had been repainted once. And then they brush painted the vinyl top that uh -huh. originally was on it. So there's a vinyl top on top when you yeah. got it? Yeah, it had a tan vinyl top uh -huh. with the bronze, bronze paint. So did you, you had, you had the painted this, the orange color? Is it, is it orange? Is it hemi-orange? It's just uh, an orange color. It's an orange color that the, the body shop had. Okay. They had leftover and it got me a deal on it. Yeah. I think it's actually a Ford color. Oh, is it? But it looks great. It looks awesome on it. Yeah, the hemi-orange has a lot more red in it. It's a lot darker. Oh, is that, is the hemi-orange is, is a red tint to it? It's a lot darker, yeah. Come around the backside here. I just reason how dirty this thing is. I think it's clean. Six, so, 68, you had the, the, the four circle of tail lights here. You go to 69, you kind of get the longer tail lights on the charger you so you did you did all the work on this car yourself were, were you trained do you go to school for this or just through the years this is a no just kind of you picked up on just kind of jumped in yeah just, this was the first engine i ever put in first oh, engine really? yeah then of course i put the tranny in wrong oh did you the pump gear wasn't aligned so when i first started it i drove about a mile and the tranny was dead <laughs> i had to pull it back out have it cleaned and rebuilt yeah put it back in trial and error i yeah. like it trial and error you, you make mistakes life happens for you you make a mistake you, you learn from it the body design too, um, such a cool body design, kind of like that, that bows in and then bows out up front. You have, four, you have 440 down here, and that's what we have under the hood? Yeah. Let's take a look at that. We heard it start up, it sounded awesome. Was that, was that your plan to put a 440 in it? No, the plan was to rebuild the 383, uh -huh. but then I found, <laughs> found an ad for the 440 for cheaper than I could have rebuilt the 383 for, uh -huh. and it was already rebuilt. It was, you know, it was a 50,000 mile motor that he pulled out of a New Yorker, I think. Okay. So it's got a big cam. You know, it's all 69 specs, basically, except for the cam. And when you put this in, this thing just slid right in with no issues? Yeah, 383 and 440, same outer dimensions, the same block. Okay. It's just so, inside, internals are different. So no problem popping this thing in here. Yeah. Sits on the mounts, tranny, everything fit right in there. Come around, we can look at the VIN too. So we have X is, uh, over here, Gene, X is for the Dodge Charger, and then P is, um, P is the baseline charger, like you said, it was bone stock, base charger when you, when you got it. Let's check it out inside. Can I open it up? Yeah. Did you think you'd have it this long when you bought it in 95? Uh, I never thought I'd find another one, so yeah, yeah I just kept it, because I've seen, <laughs> you know, I've seen, ads for these cars that are completely rotted for 20 grand. Oh yeah, yeah. And what'd you pay for it in 95? 3,500 bucks. <laughs> and I traded in a, a 84 Chevy Chevette. Oh, you did? That covered the tax. Did it really? <laughs> so you're, like I said, you uh, do upholstery. So you did all the interior back here? Yeah, but I did this like probably 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. So it's not my best work. I, it still looks great. And you have new, new seats, new covers you're putting in inside yeah. there? Can I sit inside? Oh yeah. And then I just put the fuel injection in it. That's what the little, little keypad there is for. Okay. The uh, the seats here, the Dodge logo. You put that in. Yeah, that wasn't original. That's yeah. Just added that. Yeah. Bucket seats though. That's uh, that was uh, an option in the RT, wasn't it? Uh, that was an option in all of them. Oh yeah. More of them got buck more got buckets than didn't, because okay. the Charger was a more expensive car. Uh huh. So most people opted for the, for the uh, bucket seats in seats. console. Here's something that is really cool. So many people have, you know, they buy a charger, rest of mod, they make changes, and we've seen so many episodes where the radio is changed out. I would never do that. You still have the AM radio inside. It doesn't work, but I would never put a, they make a new one, I think it's 500 bucks. Uh -huh. It looks just like that. Yeah. But then it'll have plugs for your phone, it'll have a slot for yes. CDs, so you can actually, you know, it's newer, but it looks old. This is, to have this though, man, that is so neat. Yeah, because it's an odd one with the vertical dials. Yeah, right here. So uh, that was a 68 and 9 only, I think. Volume right here, tune. And can I press the buttons? Do they work? Yeah, they'll move the thing, but yeah. they won't, it won't so, turn on. Our older viewers, you know, myself, I remember this back in the day. This is how you can change the channel. You press down, and it moves. Tell me that was supposed to come off. Yeah, that's just a pen for the little keypad. Good job, JC. Oh come on. Oh, my gosh. What the heck? Oh, my gosh. This is our last episode now. <laughs> we got to wrap it up. We got to go. You know, that is so neat how the radio still works. The, the gauges here, original? 
No, I put the, there was a, it's a white face sticker kit. Okay. So you take it all apart and put the stickers on. And, so this is always, underneath is the original gauges. You yeah, yeah. But basically. they were so faded and okay. you, know, you couldn't really, they were just in bad shape, so I just did that. I'm not, I, don't, I don't like it anymore. I wish I had the black one. Back Change there. it out? Yeah. Panels are in the still work. That's great, man. This is awesome. So good. Can, can we see inside the trunk? Yeah. There's just stuff in there. It's not really uh -oh. presentable, but it was me. I have that little cover that goes over the radiator. Okay. Just kind of hides all the dirt you see yeah. down there when I, I park it at a show or something. You gotta work yourself on this car. Then this I found, a friend of mine got me, it was some dealership back east was making toolboxes to go with each car. So he had a Super B one, so he gave me that one. Didn't oh, have, he, didn't have, he didn't have the Charger one. Yeah. Which I had an orange Charger one, that would have been cool, but. What do you that's think? actually painted on. What do you think of the, uh, the Daytonas? Uh, like, I'd rather have a Charger 500. Yeah. The only thing I don't like about those is how they move the rear window. For the uh, Daytona? Yeah. They change the rear window to... Well, they, the rear window gets moved out, so it's, okay. it's plush here. Plush it doesn't look as good, but it's for aerodynamics. That's the reason they did it. You know. Headlights pop up with no problem? Yeah. Yeah. But they do the, the stock thing where the, the passenger side opens and then the driver opens. But that's stock. Okay. They designed a way to do that. No, that's just how, because the way the lines are. Uh -huh. The length of the lines changes how, the time the vacuum gets there. Got it. Okay. Can we see, can we see, Pop? Can we do the lights? Yeah, I just have to start it. Yeah. Because they won't open. Hope they'll open. Sometimes they don't. There it is. There it is. There it is. A great cool look too, with the uh, with the doors up there, with the flaps up. Can we go for a little ride around the block? Ride along. Yeah. Let's do it. Before we do, before we do the ride along, just we never really got close with the with the body of a '69 Charger. See how, how people think it, it might look boxy, but it is so it's not boxy at all. Follow I me. Mean, follow the curve of the body as it comes in. It bows in and then it pops back out. It's such a neat, neat style design. And then Gene, come back around the front here. I love the little nuances down here. The Dodge logo right there on the light down bottom. All right, let's do it. <laughs> Nice little cruise to get a feel for the car. Is this, how often do you drive it? Is it a, is it a daily driver for you? Oh no. I take it out once a week maybe. Do you? Yeah, but it's just, I just put the fuel injection on so that's why I wouldn't start. I'm still kind of fiddling with that, trying to get it to run right. Yeah, now. well hey, you know, it's, it's, you're, you're constantly working on it. Is this the original shifter here? Say, that's, that's. No, they didn't do the pistol grip, didn't come out until 70. Okay, okay. How's the back seat, Gene? Oh, that's nice. And you got the window for you right here, right? Yeah. I had heard, now maybe you know this, heard this as well, but with the 69s, the door lock used to be back here, and they moved it up. And the pitch was for convenience, for unlocking, to getting in and out of your car. So instead of having to reach all the way back here, but there was also, maybe it's just an urban legend or a story that they, they moved it up because people were popping the back window and easily unlocking the door in order to break in. That could be true. And the other thing on this car is you, you can't lock the keys in it. Why is that? If you push the knob down and close the door, it'll pop up. No kidding. You have to lock it with the key. Really? Yeah. That's a great little, little, little safety feature. And a buddy of mine has a, he had a 68 and one of the rear windows wouldn't roll all the way down. Uh -huh. It would go down like three quarters of the way. He couldn't forget why. So when he tore the car apart, there was a whiskey bottle from 68 that was stuck in the bottom of the door. No, I'm kidding, really? The window was just hitting the, bo really? hitting the bottle, yeah. How the it's heck hilarious. did I get in there? Yeah, he said it was like half full. Uh -huh. Then he looked it up, his car was built on Friday. So it was like the end of the week. No kidding. That is great, the guy's having some fun at the plant. It's 
this here, this is all your work. Seats, roof liner, yeah. It's great, man. You do great work. People watching, they want, in Vegas, they want to get in touch with you. How would they find you as far as your shop? Uh, they can go to Instagram at Mammy Made Upholstery. Okay. Do you know, did you do the research as to how many people owned it prior to you getting it in 95? I'm talking with the second owner. Are you really? Oh, the dealership, you can count that. Yeah. I don't count the dealership as an owner, no. so. Because it was a, uh, it was a General's at the base, and he kept it at the base in one of the hangars. That's why the original dash pad is flawless. Yeah, oh my gosh, it is, yeah. And he traded it in for a truck or something. In 1995. Yeah. So when you say the base, there's Nellis Air Force Base here in Las Vegas. It's a weird glove box where it opens up. Yeah, you notice that? The glove box opens up. Everything can fall out. And up here we'd have, this is your, your heat controls. Yeah, controls up here. It's weird how they all just slide in and out. You know. Oh, okay. And it's stuck. Uh, none of that works, so. And then was this stock in 1969, the over-the-shoulder belt up the top here? Yeah. The only, uh, the only change is how it connects. Uh -huh. It's Velcro. Velcro wasn't invented. Okay. So it had a little piece of elastic with snaps, is how it was done originally. But I took all that off and did the Velcro. But I want to get a real, a real retractable three point harness, you know, like a new car has. Dean, thank you so much for taking the time to, to show us your car. And, and also, do me just buying this a 95 and you know, keeping it out on the road and keeping this car alive. It's, it's really cool, man. Yeah, I hate seeing them just sitting somewhere rotten. Exactly. You know? Yeah. Guys like you keep them going. So thank you so much, man. I appreciate it. No problem. Thank you guys for watching. If you want your car, shop, or collection featured on the show, then shoot us an email at cars, shops, and collections at gmail.com. That's cars, shops, and collections at gmail.com. And thanks for watching, and be sure and subscribe so you don't miss any future episodes of Cars, Shops, and Collections.